Hi there. So when I made my original video trying to walk people through how to alter their game types and make custom game browser settings, the entire custom game browser system was very new. And since that time, we as a kind of community of people who play regularly have ironed out settings we tend to use for most hosts, and we figured a lot more stuff out. And thus, I kind of wanted to make an addendum video where I explain that stuff and also show you how to make the actual server, since my original video didn't include that. So hopefully this will be more comprehensive. I'm going to put a link for it in the text of the old video, the description, because to this day, I have to send people to that video to get through this process because it is obtuse and janky and not designed by people who knew what they were doing, if we're being frank. So, to start off, you're going to make your own custom solo game, which is this option right here, custom multiplayer. In my case, CE will be my game. Pick any map, it doesn't matter. And then we are going to... Actually, let me pick a vehicle map, just to make sure all my settings are correct at the end. Capture the flag will be my choice, because that's what I like to play. You want to probably pick Classic CTF Pro. <clears throat> and then we're going to work through the options here. Betrayal booting. You probably want this on. Friendly fire. There are times that I think friendly fire can be good. It helps cut down on some of the worst, cheesiest camping and people being indiscriminate with rockets and stuff. But the reality is we always turn this off for most servers because people can't handle it. Even regular players, because of CE physics weird systems, will end up team killing. It's just part of the game, unfortunately. But it allows trolls to move in and go ham if there's not a host to babysit those trolls they will run they'll just keep rejoining endlessly and causing trouble so i'm just going to recommend you turn this to off it'll save everyone a lot of pain and frustration okay indicator options you do want a nav point for the flag it helps new players and honestly it helps regular players as well because if a teammate has the flag the nav point will be on your teammate, and this can help you get to them, drop them off a vehicle, or pick them up. Leave that on, unless you're trying some kind of weird assault game type or something where it might change the mechanics of that. In normal capture the flag, leave that nav point on. Other players on radar. I think this should be set to off, and I mean, ultimately, this is a personal choice. But it is often matchmaking, and there is no way to circumvent radar in the first Halo game. In 2 and onwards, you could crouch walk, and the balance of being able to have a way around that makes it a little more fair to me. But how it works out in Halo 1 is defense campers sit still as they can inside a base, and they wait, and they know exactly where they're coming from. And it makes the whole people can't cap stalemate factor increase dramatically. So I would turn that off or leave it on for your teammates if you want. You do want friend indicators. You want to be able to see where your teammates are. It can really confuse people if that's turned off. Vehicle respawn. This is the most important setting probably that is off by default in the normal settings. Drives me insane. It's a big part of why I had to make that first video. If vehicle respawn is off, you can end up in situations where people stuff their base, which is, you know, like in Blood Gulch, drive every warthog and ghost and just jam them in the middle there, trying to prevent people from capping. You can also end up in situations where they just purposely hoard all the vehicles on their side, and then they can easily pick off the other team while they have to walk across these large open maps. So, set that to 60 or 90. Your choice. I think 90 can work just because it allows for situations where I can leave a vehicle, enter a base in a particular way, and then try to get back to my vehicle, like maybe through a teleporter or something. So, 60 to 90. I think I would do three of both Warthogs, three Ghost. I firmly feel like tanks don't belong in CTF. I know this is another personal choice thing, but they lead to really bad stalemates, especially on Blood Gulch. Holy moly. If you must do tanks, please limit them to one per side. Ending, you know, you can max out with four tanks per side. And I've, I mean, I've seen three hour, zero, zero, you know, it's just a wall of tanks on each side. You don't want that. It's not conducive to game flow. 
Uh, you one banshee is probably best. I, people have different feelings about that, but those tend to be the second worst thing as far as really cheesy defense camps go. And I think one per side is fair. And if they get bad, you may decide you want to take those out. I know one of our regulars has kind of done that, and his matches flow pretty well. One per side. We'll go ahead and give one turret. That's not really an important setting. Those turrets are only useful in very rare situations. Okay, item options. I think infinite grenades is a no-go. Not only is the game straight up not balanced around that, but you end up in... It makes the game run worse and almost lag. Projectiles won't have their normal visual trails. Like rockets will just have that rocket shell and no fire flame behind it. It creates issues. Don't do it. Weapon set. By default, it's set to classic, and you probably want to change it to normal, which is the map will contain what was designed to be put on it. This will allow fuel rods to spawn instead of just double rockets. You can end up with too many rockets on a map and kind of get unbalanced. Custom starting equipment. I would say yes, and make sure that you're doing the magnum, and then you can pick if you want assault rifle, or some people have leaned pretty hard on random second weapon. I do think random second weapon can provide some game variety and help you get past really bad camps and stuff, because sometimes you'll spawn with a great weapon. So, that's up to you. Player options. You can leave pretty much all these as they are. There's a bit of back and forth discussion about respawn time. I do think certain maps work better with the full 10 seconds. Blood Gulch is one of them. People spawn right on that base and they will be on you before you can physically get that flag and get out. So, we have certain hosts who will essentially run a set for 10 second respawn and a set of maps for 5 second respawn. Like, Death Island works with 5 seconds. Most of the small maps do. That's something you'll kind of have to feel out. Uh, leave all those off. Suicide penalty. This is another thing you're really going to want to change, and for one specific reason. If you are accidentally killed by a vehicle, or if I, as an opponent, drive into you but eject and kill you with that vehicle, you get the suicide penalty. So this can create a 25-30 second respawn if people understand what's going on there and abuse it. So I would actually put that at 5 or none, your choice. But you don't want to, you know, create a system that can be abused there. CTF options. I personally think that touch score, touch to return, and flag must be home to score are best. Because, like matchmaking, the flag does not need to be home. But this creates very fast matches with the right people. I've seen Sidewinder matches go 3-0 in 3 minutes. So I think that having to, you know... It doesn't always work, but when there's both teams have the flag out and you're having that back and forth of protect your flag person, go get the other one, that can be fun, and it definitely extends the length of matches in a positive way, usually. Three caps to win, it's pretty standard. Make sure you turn on a time limit. This is another feel-it-out-as-you-go thing, but 15-20 minutes is what most people seem to agree on. Some servers put it up to 25-30, but you need a time limit. I have seen Blood Gulch stalemate as i've said for two to three hours you don't want that i can't tell you what hardcore rules are because their crappy ui doesn't tell you what they are i assume we all leave it on classic we no one could tell you what the difference is team changing sometimes people will abuse this and make nine person teams or switch back and forth like an asshole but you should probably leave this on Normal regulars who are polite will rebalance teams if they get off by two or more. Maybe swap a bad person for a good person if the skill ceiling is all off balance on the teams, that kind of thing. So the benefits outweigh the negatives. Once I've got all that set up, I'm going to hit accept options. I'm going to press start. Boot this solo one person match with my new settings. Just gonna look around and make sure the right number of vehicles spawn Capture and then it's all set up right. One banshee, three hogs of each type, perfect. And then I will immediately leave the game. We're gonna go into options and career. 
my files, game types, select. This will be my most recent one. I just made it at 421 PM. We're going to save it. And then now to create our server for custom game browser. So multiplayer, custom game browser, create, Halo 1, you know, name it what you want. Minimum is how many it takes to start the match and not be in pregame. Most people set that at 2 and just drive around and wait for it to fill up. You could set it to 4 or 6 if you really wanted to, but you should probably keep it low. If you're playing on the big maps, you should have 16 players. They were almost all designed for that, and it mostly works. The small maps, we play a lot of them on 16 players, and I have mixed feelings about it. Personal choice thing. Okay, and then let's delete this. This is what I did for my test video. So you're going to click that slot there, and it's going to have you select your maps. Unfortunately, you only get six per, because this system is very strange and obtuse. So I'm going to pick the ones I like the most here. We're going to do capture the flag, and then we're going to scroll down to the bottom. The one that you saved most recently will be at the very bottom. And once again, just check the date and time, make sure it's the right one. Casual. I don't think that actually matters. This is what you're going to name the grouping in that menu system. Yeah, right there. Another thing worth mentioning is that a lot of people realized that we had no way to naturally mix up the teams and shuffle them. So people started adding free-for-all games because that seems to be the only way to do it. So you might want to slide in a, you know, quick 10 count, 10 kill deathmatch and, you know, rockets and prisoner or something just to shift that up and quickly balance the teams again, hopefully. Because otherwise you can end up where one team has too many good players and one team has a bunch of new people. And you end up in 3-0 stomps that aren't really fun for either side. So it's best to, you know, mix things up. After we're all set, hit create match. It's going to put me into a pre-game here, so I actually won't have the right gun and the right vehicles. <clears throat> But that is the process. Once someone, if someone was to join, then we'll be in the game I set up with the right settings. So I hope this was helpful. It's not your fault that this system is hard to figure out. You're not crazy. It is poorly designed. I can go through 20 year old games and set up a multiplayer server and pick, you know, the order of my maps. That's completely random. The order of your game types is random. It's just. This thing is 25 years behind even, you know, just about any multiplayer game you can imagine. So, I hope this was helpful so that we all can have better servers. Thank you for watching.